So you've started a whole new skincare routine and now your skin is angry. What are you supposed to do? Today on Skincare for Starters with my channel, we are going to be talking about how to fix a broken moisture barrier. Let's get to it. This series is for those that are new to skincare and are just getting into it, trying to learn what you need to know and how to make your skin look better. And sometimes something that happens is that you hear about all of these products, you wanna try them all, you do a little bit too fast, too much, and your skin gets irritated, angry, or you're allergic to something. Our skin is pretty good about regulating itself. The way that it produces oil and sweat, for the most part, is pretty stable and consistent, unless we do something to mess it up. And of course, there's certain pathologies that go on with the skin, like acne or rosacea, that also can start to change things, and we can pursue treatments for that. But if you jumped into a skincare routine and you're using a cleanser, uh, maybe an antioxidant serum, a retinol, maybe you're doing a peeling solution, you're doing all these things, and you start to get irritation, you may have broken down your moisture barrier. So what is the moisture barrier? The moisture barrier, sometimes we call it in dermatology, the acid mantle layer of the skin, and it's a protective barrier on the skin. It's composed of lipids and proteins that are made by the skin to help keep the bad things out and the good things in. Our skin is supposed to hold in water and you know the good proteins, all the things. If you get a cut or a scrape, you notice how it oozes, not just bleeds, but all of that yellowish fibrin material that comes out. So that stuff's supposed to stay in the body. Um, and then of course, keep bacteria, viruses, fungus, all of that out. So our, our moisture barrier is supposed to keep the good things in and the bad things out. The moisture barrier can be pretty sensitive, however, and if you jumped into a skincare routine and you're using a bunch of different active ingredients at the same time, it's possible to thin out and even damage that moisture barrier to a point where you get so much irritation that you're chronically itchy. This actually happened to me recently and you would think that I know better and I do, but I test so many products that I find sometimes that they don't always work for me and something may have been a little bit too aggressive. And so these are the steps that I take to repair my moisture barrier if I get a little bit too much irritation. Now, first off, here's how to avoid the irritation in the first place. When you're starting a new skincare routine, I recommend introducing one product at a time. That means that you should start with a very gentle cleanser. You don't necessarily have to have something that's aggressive that has a treatment inside the cleanser. So start with a gentle cleanser and have a moisturizer. And that's kind of the foundation for a basic skincare routine. And the next thing Thing that you should add on is a sunscreen. Sunscreen is the most important thing you can do to protect your skin, not only from environmental damage, but also um, most sunscreens are a little bit moisturizing so they can help to hold in that moisture and help to repair the moisture barrier if you're picking a good one. Once you've got a cleanser, a moisturizer, a sunscreen, then you can start to add in other additional active treatments and that may be a retinol at nighttime. And then my next step would be to add in an antioxidant in the morning. That may be a vitamin C serum of which there's a lot of them on the market. And if you go to my profile, you'll be able to follow the links here in the video description and you can see some of my recommended favorite uh, retinols, some of my recommended favorite antioxidant serums and facial sunscreens. Now, those are my core recommended treatments, but you can also then jump into additional things like peeling solutions, glycolic acid, um, AHAs, BHAs. These types of things can help to turn over the skin and help to improve radiance. But if you're doing these and you're doing a retinol and you're doing a vitamin C, you may predispose yourself to irritation. So the number one thing you can do to protect your moisture barrier is don't break it down in the first place. Use gentle products and introduce new products one at a time to make sure that your skin tolerates them. So what if you're already past that point and your moisture barrier is compromised and you are having distress on your skin, itching, redness, flaking, anything like that. Well, kind of going back to the principles that I already talked about, start with a very gentle cleanser. Oftentimes my go-to is going to be the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. The CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser is very gentle, non-stripping. It's got ceramides, hyaluronic acid, a bunch of stuff to help repair and restore the moisture barrier. You don't have to use this one, however. Everybody knows that I'm a big fan of CeraVe, but you don't have to use the CeraVe cleansers if that's not your cup of tea. Um, I also really love the Cetaphil Daily Gentle Cleanser. That one is really great at not stripping the skin. It's one of the most gentle cleansers on the market and is really rare to cause irritation in anybody. Additional options is a company called Vanacream. Vanacream makes a really great line of hypoallergenic cleansers that are also not going to strip your moisture barrier. Many other companies also make gentle cleansers and you can kind of look around and explore if you find one that you like. 
I also have um, several cleansers from Aveeno or Neutrogena that I'm big fans of, but I would say in general, when my moisture barrier starts to break down and I'm getting itchy or irritated, I jump into the CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser and I stick with that for a week or so until everything is back to normal. So now you've got a good cleanser, what would be the next thing that you can do to repair and restore your moisture barrier? Well, it should go without saying that you need to eliminate all of the active ingredients that you're using. If your moisture barrier is compromised, you need to take the retinol or that antioxidant serum or the glycolic acid, AHAs, BHAs, peeling solution, whatever it is, put it on the shelf for a little while. Yeah, you might feel uh, apprehensive about sacrificing the results that you could get from it, but if they're gonna keep breaking down your skin barrier because you're irritated from them, then you're actually going to do more damage and you're gonna look worse rather than better the best thing to do is to put the actives on the shelf for a little while until you can safely reintroduce them one by one. Get rid of the actives, give your skin barrier a rest. Once you've got a good cleanser, you're putting the actives on hold, other products that you can do is you could still use a hyaluronic acid serum. Hyaluronic acid helps to bind and hold water on the top layer of the skin. And it can be a really great way to help hydrate and plump the skin. For most people, you're not going to get irritated by it. You don't have to use a hyaluronic acid serum when you're trying to restore the moisture barrier. But if you like to use one and you have one that you're a big fan of, then by all means, I think in most cases, it'll be safe for you to use to help repair and restore that moisture barrier. Now, regardless of the status of your moisture barrier, I think sunscreen remains a very important step. When your skin barrier is broken down, you're more likely to be exposed to environmental toxins and insults that could damage your skin, and then ultraviolet light can also damage your skin. So using a sunscreen that your skin tolerates well, I think is really important regardless of the status of your moisture barrier. There's a lot of them on the market. I've got a lot of my favorites linked in the description here, but Pick one that works well for your skin. For most people to avoid the risk of irritation when your skin is compromised, I would recommend the easiest thing to do is pick a zinc or titanium based sunscreen. Has very little extra ingredients. Even the chemical sunscreens, it's really rare to become allergic to them, but there's a small chance it could happen. It's less likely in my opinion if you're using a zinc or titanium based sunscreen. So I'll link some again in the comments below, but Pick one that works well for your skin type and use it consistently. In the evening time when you're trying to repair and restore your moisture barrier, it's really important to have a moisturizer that delivers good ingredients to the skin to help your body to restore from the inside. Avoid moisturizers with active ingredients like retinol in them because there are some moisturizers that contain retinol. There are some moisturizers that contain glycolic acid. So again, avoiding those actives is going to be important. I really recommend picking a lipid-based moisturizer or something with ceramides in it. Of course, everybody again knows I'm a big fan of CeraVe. The the Cetaphil cream is also fantastic. In general, the thicker, the heavier the cream, the more moisture building ingredients it's gonna have in it, and it's really gonna help provide the occlusion that's necessary for your skin to heal from the inside out. Even though the CeraVe and the Cetaphil cream that comes in the jars is really meant to be a body moisturizer, it's totally safe to use on the face. Vanna cream, again, is another great option in that category. If you're okay with spending a little bit more money to get a premium facial moisturizer, there's a few that I do highly recommend. One of my favorites is from Biosance. It's the Squalane and Omega Repair Cream. Also, I love the Skin Fix Lipid Moisturizer. Really a fantastic one. And if you're willing to spend the money on it, the SkinCeuticals Triple Lipid Restore 242 really is a great one that delivers the proper ratio of lipids and ceramides to the skin, but it does come at a pretty heavy price tag. One more step you can do after you've finished your evening skincare routine is you can do a practice called slugging. Slugging is where you might take a Vaseline type ointment and apply that to the skin at the end of your skincare routine. Some of my favorites are just plain white petrolatum, Vaseline, or you can use the healing ointment from CeraVe. You can use Aquaphor. Any of those types of things are going to do an excellent job to really provide an occlusive barrier so that you're not losing water through the skin and your skin can really heal from the inside out. Even though they don't deliver any active treatment, just providing that barrier has a ton of benefits to your skin. Once you're confident that your moisture barrier is restored and you're not having any additional irritation, you can take away things like slugging if that's not a part of your normal skincare practice and then reintroduce your active ingredients one at a time. So I would start with that retinol at nighttime again or the vitamin C or other antioxidant in the morning and just use that for a week or two. Make sure you're not getting any irritation and then go ahead and add in the next product. If you're somebody who likes to use peeling solutions 
solutions like AHAs, BHAs, and you do that, maybe do that on a weekly basis and don't use your retinol on that night that you're having to use the peeling solution. So for a quick recap, if you've damaged your moisture barrier, get rid of the actives, use a gentle cleanser, sunscreen every day, moisturizer at night, and then you can consider slugging as well with a more heavy occlusive ointment type product. If you follow these steps, your moisture barrier is going to be doing much better in a week or less. If you guys have any questions about how to repair your moisture barrier or any other topics you'd like to see covered here, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I try to answer every question that comes in. I appreciate you following along. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the alert button so you know when new videos are up on the channel every Tuesday and every Thursday. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.